Hi everybody, welcome back to LDRS Creative. We're in studio tonight for some more crafting fun. So uh, for those of you that are new, this is a uh, live and completely free craft class for you guys. And um, so welcome to everybody who's new and everybody that uh, that is uh, here regularly. Thank you so much for joining us all of the time. I see so many people coming in all the, already. Hi Deanna, yay Angie, <laughs> you're so sweet. I saw Will is in the house tonight, so welcome back, Will. Uh, good to good to see you out there again. So many people coming in. I'm going to give everybody a hello. I know I've already seen so many names going by, but um, I know Sandy Yee is here uh, from Michigan. Connie Dunbar is here. Uh, Bea, oh goodness, they just scrolled real fast, so I'm missing everybody. Uh, Sue D, welcome, and Donna from Pennsylvania. Lori is here. Uh, woot woot to Will. <laughs> you're so cute. Carla from Ohio. Everybody, I can tell everybody loves it when I say your name and where you're from. It's so fun. Um, so let's see who else is here. Uh, Sherry Hunt, welcome from Arizona. Uh, yes, put the hands up, Will. Danielle is here. Georgiana from, oh my goodness, from Honolulu. Oh, Ellen, we got to go back to Hawaii. That just sounds <laughs> lovely. Uh, Melanie is here from sunny California and Deborah Price from Michigan. Welcome. Welcome to Angel as well and Maureen is here. Thank you so much. I'm so happy that you love the class. Uh, Barbara is coming in from Connecticut. Lori in Kalkaska. Another Michigander. Awesome. All right, so we're going to get rolling. And um, so let's see, a couple of things that I do want to let you know. First of all, for those of you that are new, uh, we do a giveaway at the end of every class. And um, just so you know, the only way that we can draw your name is if you leave a comment. It's the only way that we know that you're here. So make sure you leave some kind of a comment, even if you're, even if you're just giving us a wave and saying, pick me, okay? That counts too. Um, yes, Alan is feeling better. Uh, that uh, thank you so much. Sudi was asking how you were feeling. Um, yeah, we're we're also we're, we're having some weather change stuff here a lot because it's Michigan, so it's kind of like winter is battling with spring. Um, eventually, spring does win, but we all get caught up in the battle <laughs> along the way. So, um, but anyway, a couple of things I want to mention. Um, for those of you that placed uh, your orders, like you know, last week. You know, everybody knows we ship fast. We, if we don't ship same day, we're shipping within, uh, within 48 hours of order receipt, except when we get slammed with orders. And thank you to everybody, but we got slammed with orders. <laughs> <laughs> so our team was working really, really hard to get all of that caught up. Um, and uh, so that is caught up today. But I do need to let you know, uh, for a, there were a little bit of an oversell on the um, the extreme clean the craft cleaner that has become hugely popular with the you know the you know onslaught of letter press dies and stuff so uh, that was oversold by a couple of them but uh, those are going to be shipping next week we've got a whole new shipment coming in uh, it, I, I don't know exactly what day next week uh, but it should be early in the week uh, so if you're looking for those on the website don't worry, we've got them coming. Um, what else is happening? Uh, oh, for those of you that, I, I don't know if we mentioned it or not, but the next HSN show is in May. We were originally scheduled for it to be on May 7th. Mar mark your calendars. It's going to be on May 14th. And um, as always, you're not going to want to miss this. We've got We've got a whole bunch of really cool new bundles coming to HSN, and uh, they are exclusive for HSN, so it's the only place that you're going to be able to get those. So anyway, um, hello, I see so many people coming in uh, still, so welcome, welcome, welcome. We're going to go ahead and get started. I do want to mention uh, this card that we're going to be doing tonight is going to be, um, it's kind of a clean and simple a little bit. Um, you know, sometimes we have days where we just don't have that crafty mojo kind of thing going on, and today was definitely one of my days. Um, so I've been battling to be creative. I've been doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes with, <clears throat> you'll be happy to know, new collection stuff. We're, we're planning so far out in advance right now. Um, so I've actually been in, in Christmas stuff <laughs> already. 
um, we're getting at the tail end of, of getting all of that into manufacturing and stuff. So um, anyway, some days I'm just kind of, you know, my creativity is just dead. So today was one of those days. So I hope you're going to like the card. Um, we are going to be doing some letterpress tonight. We're going to be working with a beautiful, beautiful tulip press plate tonight. And, um, you know, we, we do this on our watercolor paper. But I've been doing a lot of watercoloring lately, and so I thought, you know, it might be fun to actually pull out my Copic markers and play with those. And, um, and Corrine, who's on our design team, she does the most amazing Copic coloring. I do not, um, you know, claim to be anywhere near as talented as she is. But she has been swearing up and down that, that she can, you know, that, that, that the, our, our watercolor paper is great for Copic markers. And um, so I thought I'd give it a shot. <laughs> so we're going to see how that goes live. <laughs> you know, as always, I may be cleaning up a mess. You never know. All right, so we're going to go ahead. Oh, and, 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 and also, for those of you that already got your kits, um, you might want to get those out. We're going to take a look at those. If you, don't, if you haven't received your kit yet, you still have um, time to shop for that. I think the kits are, are going to be available through, I think it's through Sunday. Is that, I think that's right, Linnea. Linnea will put up a link for you. Um, the kit is going to have the three main items that I'm going to use in this card. So we're going to go ahead and go over head right now. Overhead, overhead. There Where? we go. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hello, Mary from Lapeer. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay. Let's see. Um, so these are the three items that are in the kit. And if you've noticed, I've been bringing in some of our, our previous releases um, because as you know, I love mixing things up. I love working with you know, all of the new stuff, but I also still love working with you know, the prior releases. I don't ever want you to think that just because something was released um, earlier in the year or last year that you can't work with it anymore. It doesn't only have to be the new stuff. We're going to go ahead, Alan, and zoom in a little bit closer so everybody can see these. Okay, so this is going to be the main event. So it is springtime, and uh, one of my top two favorite flowers in the springtime is tulips. The other is peonies. Uh, but tulips, tulips, tulips. Here it is on the very back. Isn't that absolutely gorgeous? I love these. Uh, this is a single press plate, and then we're also going to be working with uh, the stripes, as you know, we had our strip dies um, a couple of years ago that were, I mean, we sold out of those several times over. Uh, then we finally discontinued them. And so with the press plates, I really wanted to have a way of doing something with stripes. And I wanted them to be uneven and, um, you know, not necessarily the same thickness or the same spacing. So we came up with this really gorgeous stripes die. And then I also pulled out the You Mean the World to Me stamps. This was actually part of, um, it was part of a travel collection that we did. And I thought that this would be really, really fun. You know, we're in spring, we're gonna be heading into summer. This is a, you know, the best, at least here in Michigan, this is when everybody goes on vacation, uh, coming up in this, you know, whole part of the year. So I thought this would be really, really fun to bring in uh, and uh, use some of the sentiments from here. So this is what we're gonna play with tonight. Um, I am going to be going a little bit slower tonight with the letterpress because I know that in the last couple of classes we've had people who have said I don't really know what letterpress is. So I'm going to go over that again um, so that everybody has a good understanding of what it is and how it's done. So I'm going to set these aside and in just a moment and I'm going to pull out my better press okay <clears throat> this is a better press you can see mine is well loved because I use it all the time oh my goodness I'm gonna sneeze <laughs> okay hold on sorry I gotta get rid of the sneeze no it's okay I have incredibly loud sneezes <laughs> so I don't want to do no it's okay I think it's gone um, I have very loud sneezes so I don't want to do that into <laughs> the microphone <laughs> Oh, that would have been bad. Okay, so this is the better press, all right? You can see it says spellbind, spellbind. Ooh, and you can't see that, can you? Oh, you can see it right here. It says spellbinders, okay? Um, this is a platform. I call it a platform. I don't really know what the 
you know, terms are that they use. Um, but this is it. And then it has this, um, this little lid on here, if you will, it's another plate. Um, and you've got little spring, um, springs there with magnets that allow this to go up and down. Okay. The great thing about the way that they've designed this is you can see that that plate does not rest right on the base. And so once you ink up your plate, you don't have to worry about it smudging because the, um, the plate is actually lifted up over it. And then when it goes through your machine, it's going to press down. So you're going to be using this with like, for example, if Alan would go ahead and zoom back out. So I use it with my Platinum 6. Um, so you can use it with, uh, with your Spellbinders Platinum die cutting machine. Spellbinders actually has a whole list of die cutting machines um, on their website that you can use this with. There are some die cutting machines that you cannot use this with, just so you know. Now, some of you may not have the better press. Some of you may have the Go Press, and that is perfectly fine. You're going to be able to use those as well, um, or, or to use that as well. Now, I do want to go over a couple of things with this. All right. So I'm going to pull out my tulip. Let's get this off here. Ah, I got it on my magnets, right? They're so strong. There we go. So we're going to go ahead and zoom back in again. Now, this is a letterpress plate, all right? It looks just like a regular die, except this actually has a coating, a very special patented coating over the top of it. And that coating allows the ink to grab hold onto your press plate, and then it will release it once you press the paper onto it. Now, you can see that it has all these wonderful raised, raised edges. This is your design. These are not cutting blades, okay? So I'm not gonna cut myself on those. I don't need to worry about that. Um, but that is what your design is going to look like, all right? This, I will tell you, although it looks like a regular die, it is thicker than a regular cutting die. So that allows us to have a, a higher um, raised edge for that design that allows you to press even further into the paper when it goes through the die cutting machine, okay, on your press plate. Now we do this typically on watercolor paper, our LDRS um, watercolor paper right here. This is a 110 pound smooth cotton card panel. Um, it is a good heavy, heavy weight, which is absolutely wonderful. Um, I have uh, basically scoured uh, the earth, <laughs> combed the earth or whatever you want to call it, uh, to find a really good watercolor paper. I am a watercolor artist. I absolutely love watercoloring. So it was very important for me to have a great watercolor paper. This, I will tell you, is almost identical to the Better Press paper that Spellbinders has. Um, and you want to use a watercolor paper because um, you want the ink. It, it's, it's heavier, first of all. But the type of ink that you use, you're not going to be using like a dye ink on, on these. You're going to be using, um, like our hybrid inks are absolutely spectacular. They're going to hold on here. And then they're going to release beautifully, cleanly. They're not going to feather. They're not going to bleed. And when you do that on a watercolor paper, because this is thicker, the fibers are, are such that it, it, the fibers will kind of move over just perfectly and allow this to press into it. I, I, it's absolutely gorgeous, but nice and deep. And then because we're not using a water-based ink on a watercolor paper, it's not going to feather. It's not going to spread. It's going to be a really crisp line. And that's what you want. So that's why you want to use a watercolor paper. And then that is going to lend itself to hey, now I can watercolor my images with that. And with ours, you can apparently use Copics on it too. I'm going to be very careful with that because it, watercolor paper is not designed for use with alcohol markers. Okay, So I am going to be a little bit careful because I'm not sure how it's going to go. So we're going to see. We're going to find out. Um, but anyway, we're going to go ahead and we're going to get started. I'm going to show you how this is done. So the first thing I'm going to do is figure out, let's see. I'm gonna grab some tape because I'm not exactly sure. Let me move this over. 
I'm going to use my glass mat here to kind of play and figure out um, where I want the edge to be. So I'm going to put my stripes at the bottom and so I'm going to place my paper right here on my grid on my glass and I'm just going to kind of hold that down with the tape, make sure it doesn't move. And when I'm thinking here, you can see on this, I've got, this is my A2 and this is an A2. And A2 is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. All right. So this is the A2 space here. Each one of these little squares is a quarter of an inch. All right. So I'm going to go up five of those little squares. for my design. And I'm going to do that on, I'm going to try, I'm getting my head in the glass. All right, I'm going to have to get my head in the glass because, or in the camera, because I can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> I want to make sure I get this right in the right spot. I'm trying to look up in the camera, but anyway, that's not all perfect, is it? Actually, do I want five or do I want six? Hmm. I'm going to do five. All right, so one, two, four, there's five right there. I'm going to look in the camera and see if I get this right. All right, very good. Now, I'm going to go ahead and tape this up a little bit. <laughs> I just realized what I did. I actually did it backwards. See, this is why I shouldn't be crafting live. <laughs> I want my stripes. Um, doing it backwards. All right, let's try that again. So I want the stripes, so I want to leave the space open for the stripes. Wouldn't that be handy? Let me look at the lines there on the camera. Gosh, I hope that's right. Okay, so this is where it's going to go. All right, so now I'm going to do my stripes there, and they're not gonna go above that space. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and tape this onto the lid. Oh boy, all right, now this is where I gotta be careful. Now, we're gonna go ahead and do a little more information on the better press. You'll notice it says Spellbinders Better Press on this side, and then up here on the, t on the top part it says a Spellbinders Better Press. You want to make sure it says Better Press on one side and then Better Press on the other. The reason for that is as long as you have Better Press here and here, then you know that your little marks here are going to be lining up. If I go in the other direction, which I have done, you can see that they don't line up. I really wish they would have paid attention to that so I didn't have to... <laughs> constantly think about it, but that's just the way it is, right? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and line this up. I'm going to put my four corners in there and then tape this down. I am going to add a little piece of tape up here at the top as well. Okay, now where is my over here. So on the back, I've got my stripes. So my stripes are going to go, what did I say, five? So one, two, three, four, five is right here. So I'm going to line that up. The base is magnetic also, so it's not real easy to slide it if you don't get it just right. Okay. There we go. That should be good. All right, so from here, I'm going to go ahead and just ink this up. I'm going to use my hybrid ink, and I'm going to use Raven. Now, I do give this a little bit of a smush. <laughs> a smush is a twist. I just think it inks faster. You want to be very, very careful when you are doing this um, in that you don't, when you're using your letterpress, do not try and use your letterpress dies with the plates uh, that come with your die cutting machine. 
Remember when I mentioned that your press plates are thicker? Even if it goes through, you're probably going to be damaging, there you go, your, um, your die cutting machine over time. You want to make sure, because this, this is actually going to be thinner. Let's see how we did. Gorgeous, George. Looks so beautiful. Okay. We're going to give that a little clean. Get right up off of there. All right. Now, I am going to gently remove this tape. And I'm just going to set it aside because I'm going to use it again. But I am going to give this a little bit of a clean. Oh, i got to clean the top of that. Now, if you end up getting, you know, too much ink on the top of that, just wipe it clean. Okay, you just kind of give it a little tap into your cleaning cloth. Okay, next up, I'm going to go ahead and tape this back down. Right where it goes, just like that. But this time I'm going to do what I started to do last time. Get things out of the way here a little bit. All right. So now, sorry, I'm grabbing some more tape. Put my little pieces of tape over here. Okay, I'm going to tape down these sides a bit. Melanie's here. Who? Melanie. Oh, hi, Melanie. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Melanie Smith is one of the uh, Better Press babes. And uh, she has, actually has a, um, she's, she's first of all amazing with the letter press. Um, but she also, um, Sorry, she has used our products a lot. She has a um, special discount code, Melanie. You can share that if you would like. You're very, very welcome to share your discount code here um, so that you can get her discount on um, any products, you know, any regularly priced products that you find in the store. Okay, so I've covered that up because I don't want to get the flowers in that area. Um, I'm actually going to put one more piece of tape on it. And the reason I'm kind of building this up a little bit is I want some extra thickness. So the, um, the letterpress plate is going to press into the paper, right? So it presses into the paper and it's going to press into this area and I don't want it to press too far in. I don't want it to be too strong of an, of an indentation there. Um, but I want to get the flowers that we are going to be working with, which I just had in my hand a moment ago, my tulips. Um, I keep putting things back. I'm telling you, I'm having like a brain dead day. Like, geez, what is happening with me? Okay, so I'm going to kind of hang this off the edge just a little bit. Now, we're not going to get this entire flower. This is the edge of my A2, one, two, three, four, five, right? This is where our design is going to start, is right about here, okay? I'm actually gonna raise it maybe up a tiny little bit. So here's my thinking. All right, I'm gonna tell you why I'm angling it. Let me just show you. So when this is straight, it's great if I want to put a sentiment down here, if I'm going to pop it up, if I'm going to die cut it, if you know, whatever, I'm going to co cover some of that flower. But the way that I want to do this, let me grab my sentiments here. So I'm going to want to lay one of my sentiments up here. And you know how weird I am, how fussy I am about having everything straight um, and everything centered. So I'm going to want to put, let's say, one of these sentiments right here. And I think it might cover some of that, and it's going to drive me bonkers. <laughs> so to get 
um, to not deal with that, I just wanted to show you that you can actually angle your die a little bit. And I'm going to center that, make sure I've got it centered. What's going on, Alan? And so now when I place this here, I'm going to have more room to fit this in. I'm going to lay that down just a little bit more. There we go. Oops, got my head in the camera again. <laughs> Mr. Hunt isn't there to tell me when, it, when my head's in the camera. Keep your head out of the camera. Keep your head down, Hunt. <laughs> Keep your head down, Hunt. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. Mm, I think I'm going to raise that up a little bit. I want to catch the bottom of that one. Two, three, four, five. That, so that line is going to be right there. I want to have that little bit of stem. Just that tiny little bit of stem I think would be nice. Maybe a little bit more. Okay. All righty. Let's see. Um, hey, Melanie, Mel and, and is Corrine out there too? Yeah, Corrine's out there. Okay, Melanie and Corrine, they, they actually both have, um, have press plate Facebook groups. So both of you ladies, if you want to put some links to your groups, please feel free to do so. I think everybody would love to join your groups and see everything that's happening in there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead now and ink this up, and I'm going to cross my fingers that this is going <laughs> to... That this is going to be spaced properly where it needs to go, giving it a little bit of a twist. All right, inking it up. We'll move something over here so you don't have dead, dead air there. <laughs> okay, now I'm just running this through the die cutting machine. I'm going to cross our fingers and see what happened. All right. I am going to give this a quick little clean. Um, when you're cleaning with your Extreme Clean, I encourage you to go in one direction. Don't be going like this and pressing down really hard. Um, you know, we've got this little kind of um, felted kind of, you know, pad on here, but um, that can come off if you're too you know, rough with it. Um, so, and, and, you know, you can put it back on. It's just takes some, you know, a little bit of um, finagling. But, um, but I, I, we call it a dauber because you're supposed to be dabbing it, right? <laughs> Keep that in mind. <laughs> but look how beautifully it cleans everything up. It's like new again. Absolutely gorgeous. Gorgeous. All right. Let me give this a little bit of a clean. Now this is a flat surface, so if I kind of go around here, that's fine. But doing that motion on something that, you know, like one of your press plates, um, can't is you know it's a it, it can snag, it can rub on there. But you can see how I can get that pretty clean. All right, let's move that over. All right, now for the reveal. We're going to see what happened. Ouch. Don't you love it when you get like a bit of tape or paper right up under your fingernail? <laughs> that just happened to me, and um, I was able to control myself. I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> all right, I'm going to slowly pop this up. So I don't want to tear this paper at all. This tape that I'm using is the mint tape um, from Spellby uh, scrapbook.com. It is absolutely my favorite. Look how gorgeous. Isn't that pretty? So pretty. So, better press is done for the night. Okay. 
Oh, you know what? I just got a little bit of, must have come off my hand. I got a little bit of ink there. If you get a little bit of ink on you or on your paper where you don't want it, um, if you don't already have one of these, you can get these. I know at like Amazon and stuff. This is by Tombow. It's a mono sand eraser. Um, and it is just wonderful. Ta-da! Okay. What are we going to do next? What are we going to do? I'm going to go ahead and stamp a sentiment. Da -da 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 -da. All right. I wish you guys could feel this. I am so crazy about how the letterpress feels. That's one of the things that's like totally rockin' cool about letterpress. You know how you, know, you get like an invitation to a wedding or something and you can actually feel the invitation. You can feel the words pressed in. That's what letterpress is. And so I'm very tactile and I absolutely, I just love that. I just think it feels so cool. Stop touching it. I know, stop touching it. You're gonna make it itch. <laughs> We're gonna make it, what? <laughs> You're going to make it itch? Yes. What are you talking about? Uh, what are you talking about, Willis? I'm going to go with So the Adventure Begins, I think. Oh, you know what? How cute is that? I miss your face. <laughs> well, I, I, I miss, love that. I missed your face. I missed your face, <laughs> but my aim is getting better. That's right. I like I miss you so much, too. Adventure awaits. That's really cute. So the Adventure Begins. I like that one. I'm going to go with So the Adventure Begins. I, I really like that. Now these stamps are all photopolymer. Right here. Made right here in the USA. There we go. That looks good. I think. Maybe. Maybe not. We'll see. We're going to hope it's straight. I can't really put my head over it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, first time I'm stamping with this one, so I'm just going to give that a little bit of a wipe and get any residue off there from manufacturing. All right, we're going to go ahead and ink this baby up. Let's get my stampendable. Give it a moment to sink or to soak in nicely. I'm going to do one more time. It's a brand new stamp, so it hasn't really been conditioned yet. There we go. Gorgeous. Gorgeous, George. I don't know why I say that. <laughs> but I'm realizing I say it a lot. I think it's like a, an accent or the, uh, not, uh, the way like some, somebody, oh my goodness, I know who it is. It's um, Curtis, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis' dad. What's his name? Tony Curtis? The way he talked, I had a job years and years and years ago and one of the guys that I worked with used to always jokingly kind of say things like Tony Curtis from some movie and that's what that's from. It's gorgeous, George. <laughs> okay, look how cute that is already. I mean, seriously, if I just put that on, if I like matted that on, yes, thank you, Brenda, Tony Curtis. <laughs> If I matted that on a um, just like some color cardstock in the background, super super cute. I, th I mean, you could you could leave it just like that, and it would just be pretty. Should we call it done? Are we done? Yes. <laughs> We're not done. We're gonna keep going. <laughs> you guys wanted to actually see some crafting, didn't you? Didn't you? Didn't you? All right, I got some Copics. Thank you, Gail. All righty, color me. Melanie says color me. Okay, we're going to do a little bit of playing. I don't, I'm not exactly sure how this is going to turn out, but we're going to try. 
Um, so I have two greens here for the leaves. We're going to leave those for last. And I have three pinks here. I actually had three different pinks chosen till I think, what was it, about two minutes before we went live and I changed it because I was going with more of a purpley pink and I thought, I'm going to do something brighter. Um, wow, this one had a blowout. That doesn't look good. Something happened there. All right. Um, so what do I have here? I've got RV13, RV14, RV17, for those of you that want to know which Copic colors, okay? I've also got like a canary yellow that I just love, and it's Y02. It's my, my very favorite yellow. So we're going to see what we're going to do. Yes, Phyllis, Copic's on watercolor paper. Scary. We're going to cross our fingers. <laughs> Now keep in mind, everybody, this paper is not designed <laughs> for Copics, but we're going to see. Now, I've mentioned this before. Some people like to color with their, with their Copics or their alcohol markers starting from light to dark. Some people like to do dark to light. Um, really depends on, you know, how you were trained and how you practice and what you're most comfortable with. Like it's all of that together. So I do like to go light to dark. It's just how I do it. So we're going to see how this goes. I'm going to start with RV13, which is technically how you're supposed to say it. Uh, but I'm going to go with 13. And uh, I'm going to lay this down. I'm not going to worry about being so, so incredibly perfect with this. I am going to be a little bit careful about going right over the black lines because, like I said, this paper is not designed for Copic markers. So I don't want to cause my hybrid ink to bleed. I don't know if it will. It might. <laughs> um, so I'm just trying to uh, just be a little cautious. Ah, Gail is a light to dark too. Very nice. So now I'm moving up a color. And we're just going to kind of touch in some darker color in here. Just a little bit. And some areas where we might see a little bit of shadow. Leaving some little highlights because that's always nice. All right. And then I'm going to come in with the R17 and just deepen that. Just a little bit. I'm going to do a tiny little bit of blending with the lightest color, which is the RV13. I'm leaving some little kind of white areas because I like those highlights. And as I'm going over my colors, I'm not going all the way to the very deepest, darkest point of the dark color because I don't want to pull that color out too much. I think that looks kind of pretty. What you think? You guys like it? I kind of like it. It's kind of pretty. I'm going to bring a little more of the RV17 in at the bottom here just for drama. I like the drama, the depth of color. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you, Dieta. Thank you, Star. Just bring that up so it's nice and beautiful and pink. Yay! Gorgeous. I think it's lovely. Okay, that's one down. Yay, love it. Um, all right, so yellow, by the way, I do love canary yellow. 
but yellow is of all the colors out there is my least favorite color just so you know um, but I think it has a very important purpose in flower beds I think yellow is incredibly important in flower beds because it gives you that you know there's so much pink and purple and red and then you see these beautiful pops of yellow um, and they're just like bright spots in the garden. They're just so pretty. So I'm going to bring some of this in here. But I'm not going to have a yellow. I'm hoping this is going to work. I'm not going to have a yellow um, tulip. I still want to have kind of a pink tulip. So I'm going to bring some pink in here. You know how you see those tulips that are kind of like, they have some yellow on them? We're going to see how this goes. Bear with me. I'm not going to talk very much in here because I don't want to mess this up. I may have already messed it up for all I know. Worst case scenario, I will come back in with the whole thing in pink if I don't like what I'm doing. So far, I don't like what I'm doing. <laughs> but we're going to see what happens. I blend some of that yellow in. I almost feel like I need to have some pink at the very bottom to kind of ground it. It looks kind of like fire. Don't know if I'm loving this. Tone that yellow down a little bit. So we just have little bits of it. I feel like I had too much yellow in it. Angel saying try a darker yellow. Darker. It's getting a little orangey. Sorry, I just want to blend that up a little. Yeah, I'm afraid if I try a darker yellow, I'm going to get real orange. But that looks like it's blended, kind of cool. Got a little orangey. What's the other flower going to be? It's going to, I'm going to go back to this one oh. for balance. Highlight some of this darker pink so it's not so orange. It's just strengthen that pink. It's 
sometimes. Yeah, I think you're stuck with it at this point. Yeah, I think I'm stuck with it, but I don't know if I love it. It says, you know, sometimes you try things and it works. Other times you try things and you end up with this. <laughs> I don't think it's that bad, but I don't love it. But it's blended. It's blended nicely. It looks like fire. It looks kind of like fire. All right, we're just going to go with it. All right, so yellow goes aside because I'm going to do another one of these. So this is 13. Leaving little bits of white here and there. Thank you, Lori. I don't know how I feel about that middle one. I feel like I want a little orange on it, but we're going to go with it. So now up to 14. Kind of trying to think about where the light is a little bit. And now we're going to get some of the darker. Oh, Terry, you got to use those stripes if you got them. They're so fun. Don't let your craft stuff sit there. You got to play with it. And please share with us too. Share pictures with us. We'd love to see what everybody's making. You can share with us in our um, in our Facebook group. So we have a private Facebook group. If you don't already belong, please go ahead and join. We would love to see what you're doing. We always check as well. Um, we always look uh, to see what everybody's doing on um, both of the um, uh, the letterpress groups. So many beautiful pro uh, projects, and you know, and they're they're private too, so you don't have to worry, you know, about trolls coming in and you know saying things, doing things, whatever. It's you know, it's all like people, you know, have the same you know interests um, as we do, and it's just a lot of fun. Everybody's very supportive in both of the groups, and um, you know, and you can learn a lot in them too. So. I really encourage you to give them a try. Okay, so there's that one. You know, it actually, I think, balances it nicely. Now that I have that, you know, the fire surrounded by <laughs> the two pinkier ones, I really kind of, I think I kind of like it because it, um, it kind of balances those two. So um, I'm going to go ahead, though, I don't need this yellow anymore. I'm going to go ahead now with my greens. So let me tell you which greens I have. Uh, YG07, let's angle that a little bit so maybe you can see it, YG07 and G07. Um, Terry, uh, I'm sorry, Teresa Jarvis is asking, do we have the links for the letterpress groups? Um, Corrine and uh, Melanie, if you are both, I know that they were, they posted the links earlier, I think. Um, so Corrine and Melanie, if you want to go ahead and post links to your groups again, please feel free to do so. And on, uh, YouTube. Huh? Also on YouTube. Also on YouTube? Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, so now I'm going to start in with the green. And um, I'm going to color these very simply, the, um, the leaves. 
So I have two greens. I'm going to go over them first just with my lightest green, which is the YG07. I'm literally just going to cover them with this to begin. One thing I'll say when you're coloring, when you're painting, whatever it is you're doing, don't be twisting your hand and your arm and your wrist around. Move your image. You'll get much better results if you move the image instead of twisting your hand. Okay, because we all develop, um, you know, comfort when it comes to, you know, like the strokes of the marker or the brush. Um, and you want to make sure that your hand is comfortable as you're, as you're coloring or painting. You're going to get better results that way. So I'm always flicking like in the same direction, whether I'm flicking up or flicking down. I'm not twisting my arm all over the place. Now these are very small little flicks. I'm just touching down with the marker, with the tip of the brush marker. I always like a brush marker, um, a brush tip. Allows me to get into smaller areas. And then as you press down ever so slightly and then flick up, you lift off of the paper. Okay, I could actually leave it like that if I wanted, to be honest with you. But I'm going to go just a little bit darker in a few spots. So here is the G07. We're just going to add a little bit of um, kind of a shadowy color, if you will, just to darken a tiny little bit. Thinking about where the light is, you know, kind of envisioning that the light is coming in kind of from this angle, kind of at the top, but down a little bit. So we might have some little, little shadows here and there, here and there. You can see it's kind of cupped over. It's kind of curved ever so slightly. So that's why it gets like darker in that middle. And this one I'm just going to go a little bit up the outer side of it, just a tiny bit. I am going to smooth these out a little bit too. Get underneath here a bit. All right, so looks a little stripey. All right. Well, Mary says I. Marianne says I agree, Dieta, but I have no idea what that's for. <laughs> Sometimes I look up and I see everybody's in the middle of conversations and I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> I live that. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm just kind of blending just a little bit, blending those colors together a bit. So I'm blending from the dark into the lighter color, but still leaving some of the light areas. It's very important. I missed a spot. 
right up underneath there. There we go. Oh, thank you, Dee Dee. Just kind of blend that in, push in from the darker into the lighter area. Just a little bit. I'm not going all the way across the light area, just enough to kind of pull some of the darker into the light. It just kind of cuts down on the, you know, how strong that transition is from one color to the next. And by the way, I think Corrine was right. Not that I had any doubt. If I had doubted her, I wouldn't have tried this on live. <laughs> But I think it's really, really nice um, using the Copics on the watercolor paper. It's beautiful. Very happy with that. I think it looks so nice. And you know what? I think I'm going to leave it like this with the flowers just so bright. I was actually originally thinking that I was going to add color, the same colors as the flower down here in stripes. But I think I'm going to leave it because those, oh my goodness, do those ever pop right out of there. And you know what else? I was also thinking I would trim this and put a backer on it like a black. I thought I would mat it, but I don't think I'm going to do that either. I think I like it just the way it is because that is so gorgeous and bright. Now, I do need... Alan, I need my paper trimmer because my card base is a little bit too wide. Yes, they do. Thank you so much, Francis. She says, the stripes remind me of a planter box. Phyllis is saying, is it bleeding through the back? Nope. Nope, nope, nope. It's beautiful. Um, we can make the long paper trimmer. Thank you, Melanie. I think it looks really nice. I'm very happy with it. Um, so I have my long paper trimmer here because my card base is just a little bit too wide, ever so slightly. So I'm just going to trim literally like a sixteenth of an inch off of the side of that. And let's see if that fits and it does. It's great. I'm really glad I changed the colors. They're much more vibrant than what I was planning on doing initially. Um, and I'm really glad I went brighter with it because I think it looks really summery. And I love it. It's so pretty. You can actually see, my goodness, how, what am I doing? Sometimes I surprise myself at how ridiculous I am. Make sure that's straight, and it is. Okay. So one of the things, I don't think you got, you guys can't see it. There you go, see it? See how you have the lines there? I think it's kind of cool, actually. You can see those little lines there? That's because I, remember when I told you I had all that tape there, I had like three layers of tape, and it's still pressed in just a little bit. That's how you can see how well this presses, these press into the paper. Okay, because you can see that on there. Um, but anyway, you can only see that if you tilt, you know, in, in a certain light. But it's actually kind of cool because the flowers continue, but they have no color. I think it's kind of neat. But anyway, I think that came out really, really pretty. I'm actually very happy now with that center flower because I think having the two pink flowers on either side of it really brings balance to it and I think it is just beautiful. Simple, elegant, doesn't take that long to do. Easy coloring, really fun, really pretty. Yay! Alrighty, Mr. Hunt, you want to switch yeah. the camera? Sure. Alright. There we go. 
I just enjoyed that. It, um, I'm pleasantly surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I really am. Do you want to show the other one or no? No, I don't want to show the other one. <laughs> I was practicing. I, was just, I wouldn't say practicing. I was planning. I was preparing and trying to figure out what colors I was going to do. And um, the very first, when I, I was so frustrated because I remember when I said early on that I had like zero mojo. But I think you guys helped me out with that. I'm so pleased with how that turned out. It is just gorgeous for spring, for summer. It's absolutely perfect. Very happy. Okay, so, uh, let's see. I'm trying to read some of the comments, but they're going too fast. I'm trying to think of what we can do for a giveaway tonight. Alan, what can we do for a giveaway? Because I don't want to give away something that is in this bundle, <coughs> excuse me, um, because so many people have bought it, and I don't want to give something away from it. Um, you know what we could give away? No. We could give away a pad of the watercolor paper. I know we've done that a lot, but you know what? I think a lot of people appreciate uh, getting that as well. The watercolor paper is absolutely fantastic. I would give away one of the cleaners if I had any to give away. <laughs> I don't have any. So yeah, why don't we do that? We're going to go ahead and give away a pack of the watercolor paper because it's the other item that I used. All right. So get your messages out there for me, please. Am I supposed to... Uh... <laughs> Waiting for you, Mr. Hunt. Okay. Thank you, Donna. She says it came out beautifully. Thank you. <laughs> How about Donna Dunn? Oh, Donna Dunn? D U N N. Okay, Donna. Donna Dunn, you have won tonight. Congratulations. The watercolor A2 uh, paper pack. Um, so, Donna, I need you, please, 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 please to send us um, your complete name and mailing address and send that to uh, customer service at ldrscreative.com. I'm sure Linnea is going to get that up there for everybody. I also wanted to mention to Dieta, I am so sorry. We have been so swamped. I do have the card that I'm going to send to you from last week. I just, I want to, all right, I'm just going to tell you, I want to include a nice little note in it and I haven't had time to spend on it to write something and I want to write something nice to you and um and we've been so swamped with everything so that is going to be sent out to you i did get your message and i wasn't ignoring you i just failed miserably in my communications this week so i am so sorry <laughs> okay everybody thank you so much for being here once again for joining us it means the world um, that you guys come and spend your evening with us every Thursday night. So thank you so much. We will be back again next week. We're actually going to be working with tulips again, but we're going to be working not with these tulips. We're going to be working with the tulip cover plate letterpress plate that we have. It is absolutely amazing. Um, so we're going to have some fun with that next week. Make sure you grab your bundle while you can. That is, um, is going to be out there um, for the next week. And this one, if we still have some left, will only be out there through Sunday, I believe. Um, and then um, pretty soon we're going to be announcing what we're going to do in two weeks, and we'll get a new bundle up for that. Yay! All right, everybody, thank you so much for joining us. Have a wonderful evening. Have a fantastic weekend. I hope it is nice and sunny and warm wherever you are. Have a great night. Bye, everybody.